Hey guys, I'm Greta Kate. I'm a stay-at-home mom living in a small town in the heart of Wisconsin. I usually have a lot to say, so I'm glad you're here to listen. Grab a latte and a cozy blanket and let's chat. This is the Greta Kate Homebody Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Greta Kate Homebody Podcast. This week is another random one for you. I am chatting about life right now, and I'm going to do a quick dive into beauty. This morning, I'm drinking a cafe latte with chai, which is essentially the cheaper way to get a dirty chai latte from Starbucks. So thank you so much to Sam and Annie for supporting the podcast this week. If you'd like to support the show and get a shout out on the podcast, you can do so by making a donation at buymeacoffee.com slash homebody. So I wear a lot of hats. I'm a stay-at-home mom, a baseball and a basketball mom. I'm a coach's wife, which essentially means my schedule is full from like April to August and actually January to August because that's when they start practice. But I'm also a business owner and an affiliate and a network marketer. And I'm back in college in my mid-30s to seal up an accounting degree. So my life is basically nonstop, as I think most people's are. Um, I found myself waking up this morning. Well, here's a little backstory first. My daughter has had the worst sleep schedule since she turned one. She was like a dream baby when it came to sleeping. She loved sleeping as a baby. And then she flipped a switch when she turned one and would be up from like 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. just hanging out and playing. And I'd put her in the pack and play in our living room and we'd watch the Santa Claus movies and I would just pray she'd fall asleep so I could get a couple hours of shut eye before I'd have to get my stepson up for school. It's probably why homeschooling that year was such a blur because I was not awake at all. When she was 13 and a half months old, she figured out how to crawl out of her crib and pack and play so I could no longer keep her confined in those late night hours. And it forced us to convert her crib to a toddler bed and put a baby gate on her door to prevent her from wandering the house or going downstairs to wake up her brothers when she'd get up in the middle of the night. I just I just never got a full night of sleep. And I ran on fumes and caffeine. And quite frankly, I still am. It's just kind of wild. She still loves to sleep. But there are nights where it's like 1am before she goes to bed. And then at 645, when I have to get the boys up for school, I'm just dying. Obviously, there's a light at the end of this tunnel in this department because she starts school in September. But for now, it's a battle of trying to figure out when to wake her up so she's not falling asleep super early and getting up at 4 a.m. Yeah, we've gone through that stage quite a bit. But if you let her sleep in too long, then she stays up till 1 a.m. And I should probably also mention she ditched her naps before she turned three when we refused to let her have her nook anymore. So it's not like she's napping during the day and then staying up. She's just wild. She's been wild from the moment she gets up to the moment she goes to bed. All that to say, well, that was kind of a random long tangent, sorry, Um, but I found myself waking up this morning and hitting snooze and saying, I can't believe I have to get up right now and make school lunches and get these boys to school. And it was like this delicate balance of, do I let them stay home today because I want to sleep in and let them sleep in so I can sleep? But also knowing that like an hour later, I was going to be up yelling like, you boys are driving me crazy, turn your music down. Stop screaming at the video games. No, you don't need another snack. All those kinds of drama and dilemma that comes with having the kids home. And honestly, this morning, I have like zero excuse to be tired because my daughter isn't feeling well. And she went to bed early last night. Thank you, Jesus. However, I spent the entire day cleaning up like sickness. So at least I did it on a full night's sleep, right? So today's podcast is going to be a short and sweet one for you because I'm still nurse mom again today while she's recovering. And I was actually going to deep dive into decluttering because um, I have a guide for you guys that I'm going to be getting out hopefully soon. And plus it paired well with what we talked about last week and last week's episode. But I heard something on a different podcast uh, this week that really sparked something in my heart in the realm of beauty. So I'm just going to touch a few things on physical beauty and then dive into what the podcast was kind of talking about in creating beauty And then kind of all tie it into your home and how that kind of fits into this podcast of being a homebody. So I wanted to dive into physical beauty first. It's not something I plan to talk about on this podcast a lot, but I did just partner with a beauty brand that I was already getting all my makeup from anyway, and now I'm getting my skincare from them too. So you may hear ads from time to time about them, 
But beauty isn't really the focus of this podcast. Maybe we'll talk about it in like the realm of like self-care and taking care of yourself or Huga or anything like that. Um, but I mentioned that in February, my goal was to actually do my hair and makeup every single day. And so far, so good on the makeup, but not the hair. That's still like a major train wreck. I'm working on it. It's kind of something that isn't that big of a priority to me. So I just never make it one. I never wanted it to be like a vain thing. Like, I don't want to seem superficial or something or promote being fake in any way. And it actually, honestly, you guys, drives me crazy to watch how much makeup some women put on to like contour and hide and change the look of their face. I'm always just amazed how they can do it with makeup, which is amazing, but also a little bit sad that they feel the need that they have to wear that much makeup in order to feel pretty and not feel pretty as the way they are. Um, <clears throat> The company that I partnered with has been around for 60 years and they are like 100% all about making you feel beautiful in the skin you're in and learning to enhance your natural beauty. And now that I'm a partner, I get to teach other women that confidence using these products, which I think is really great because we are all created wonderful and beautiful. So I'm going to put a link in the show notes today with the beauty brand. And you know what? If you're interested in ordering anything, you can get in touch with me either on that site or emailing me at forestmer at gmail.com or on my Instagram profile. If you don't already follow me, my profile is uh, Greta Terrell, just my name, G-R-E-T-A-T-E-R-R-I-L-L. Or you can comment and I'll give you an exclusive discount just for mentioning that you heard this on the podcast. So I'm not going to do any ads on today's podcast because I really wanted to just get into talking about creating beauty. As an artist, this is something that I strive for all the time, using my artistic talents to create something that will bring people joy. I have an online store where I sell handmade items like dishcloths and jewelry, and I have some really fun things coming this year as well. I also design my own graphics for t-shirts and sweatshirts and coffee mugs and that kind of stuff. And I sell those too in hopes that I can bring my art into other people's homes and make them feel beautiful and enjoy what I create. So this podcast, I was listening to on Wednesday, Net Positive. It's probably my favorite podcast I listen to. They were talking about a TikTok video where this girl is complaining about Mount Rushmore and how much time and money went into it. And it sparked the host to start a conversation about creating beauty. Like Mount Rushmore took something plain and ordinary and turned it into a work of art that people flock to to see every single day. It is packed there. I don't know about you guys, but if someone asked me to take a mountain and carve faces into it, I don't think I would have the artistic vision to be able to do that. I mean, George Washington's face alone is like 60 feet tall. I'm working on a painting right now. And while I'm fairly versed in landscape paintings, Faces are always a challenge for me to be able to get the proportions correct, which is why I'm doing this painting in the first place to practice. But the painting is only like 10 inches by 15 inches. I cannot imagine having to get it for four separate people that are 60 feet tall. I mean, it really takes some artistry to be able to do something like that, right? And I'm going to take the time to agree with what they said on that positive about creating beauty in our own lives. They talked about when you go to cities that require new buildings and companies to adhere to certain aesthetics when they're building to keep the historical aesthetic of the town. And I absolutely love that. I love seeing that in towns. You know, we all know what McDonald's looks like, but when you go into a town where they've required the building to be brick that matches the surrounding businesses, and it just looks like there's more effort put into it, right? That is so much more joyful to look at and beautiful than like, the typical fast food restaurant. Another example would be historical architecture. Have you ever noticed like when you walk into a historical home, the wood detail is like so ornate and beautiful. And then you walk into a new build home now and it's like drywall with some paint on it. There's like no character whatsoever. I love arch doorways and old doors and ornate trim and all the things. Like, that's what I'm talking about. I think people want new and they want fast, but there's just something so beautiful about craftsmanship that has taken time and and it's a work of art that you can enjoy and look at. And please tell me I'm not alone on that. I, I don't think I am. 
One of my favorite places in the entire world is Fish Creek, Wisconsin. And if you've ever been to Door County, you'll understand what I'm talking about immediately. So Door County, if you've never been there before, is the peninsula of Wisconsin that like cuts up into Lake Michigan, north of Green Bay. At the low end of the county, you have like the main hub of Sturgeon Bay, which is a city. It has all the grocery stores and the fast food chains and all the things. But once you get north of Sturgeon Bay, all of that disappears. Even like the gas stations are like outside of city limits. It's always busy up there, but life always feels so much slower for some reason. And I think that's because why. So Fish Creek is my favorite for a lot of different reasons, but pretty much any town up there is amazing because there's no big box stores. There's no grocery chains. There's no fast food. It's a completely different lifestyle. And I love being up there. The beauty of the architecture and the landscaping is so good too. You just like get this overwhelming sense of excitement and peace at the same time just being there. It's definitely a happy place for me. The only place that I actually kind of get excited to go other than being at home. So I know that was kind of like a random tangent. I'm sorry, but I was just trying to paint a picture in your mind about what I was talking about with with the beauty and and looking for that beauty. So I'm going to kind of wrap it all up with how you can be inspired by that type of beauty and create your own. So first of all, I encourage you to look for it. Write it down, even if it's dumb. Like I loved the hanging flower baskets outside of Culver's when I was getting my fish dinner today. Or the vintage movie theater downtown is my favorite, and I love when they turn the lights on at night. We actually have one of those in our small town, and it is the best. I think it'll help inspire you in life and to help you slow down, notice your surroundings, and just find joy in the beauty that is all around you. If you're a creative person, share your creativity with others, whether it's creating something for someone or selling your arts and crafts, just a gift for someone, whatever it is. And I think that this is where I was kind of going all along with it. But in regards to your home, make it beautiful and not just the inside. We talk a lot about Huga and the inside and inviting people in. But I think that we can focus also on the exterior of your home, whether you have a big front yard or you just have a small patio in your apartment. I think curb appeal helps bring joy to other people as well. If you've ever walked by a home that's well taken care of and has beautiful landscaping and decor, you know what I'm talking about. I know my eyes are drawn to beautiful homes, especially beautiful historic homes and homes that have gorgeous gardens, whether they're tiny homes or massive mansions. I And I want my home to be that for other people. We have so many people that come down a road every day walking their dogs, walking to school, just taking a walk in general, driving to school. We're kind of near the hospital. There's a lot of people that come down our road and I would love to be able to bless every single person, even if it's just because they like the way my home looks. So that's my challenge for you to find a way to bring people joy through your home, whether interior, whether you're inviting them over or the exterior of your home. Like I said, the people that are passing by that can go, wow, that's beautiful. And then intentionally looking for beauty in the world around you. So next week, I'll probably jump back into the organizing train with you guys and teach you a little more about the declutter road mapping that we talked about in last week's episode. And as always, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. If you're interested in checking out my shop or subscribing to our weekly emails so we can stay in touch, you can visit forestmer.com. See you next week.